given the vectors PQ, RQ, and RS, calculate the vector PR. And so PR is going to be equal to PQ plus QR. And that makes sense. And someone may say, well, how can we visualize that? Can we even visualize that? Well, imagine that you have this point, P, that's the starting point, and the ending point is R, right? And you want to go from P to R, but you have an intermediate point, a point in the middle. Let's call this point Q, all right? And so in order for you to get from P to R, you have to go from P to Q, all right? So that's why we have PQ, all right? And then from Q to R, all right? And that's why we have QR. And so that means that PQ, I'm sorry, that means that PR is actually equal to PQ. So we have PQ plus QR. That's why we have QR, okay? And so that's how we will do that. Now, but the question is, okay, well, what is, what is, um, we don't have QR, we have PQ, right? PQ is three and negative five, but we don't have QR, but we have RQ, so that's good. And we have RS, but we don't have QR. So what we have to do is I'm going to switch QR and I'm going to switch the letters. So instead of writing QR, I'm going to put RQ. So I switch the letters because I don't have, I don't have QR, but I have RQ. So I'm going to switch the letters. So instead of writing QR, I'm going to switch the letters to RQ. But there is a price for doing that. And the price for switching the letters is you have to put a negative sign over front. Now you can switch the letters, but in order for you to switch the letters, you have to pay the price. And the price is putting a negative out front. And so QR is equal to negative RQ. And they are saying the same thing. But if I, have, if I want to switch it, which I did switch the letters, I have to put a negative out front. And so we have PR is equal to PQ plus negative RQ. We say positive multiplied by negative and positive multiplied by a negative is definitely a negative. And so we have PR is equal to PQ minus RQ. And so what is PQ? Well, PQ is equal to three and negative five. That's what we have here, three and negative five. And RQ is equal to five and negative 10, five and negative 10. And so we subtract, in order for you to subtract two matrices, you must subtract corresponding entries, all right? So we have three minus five, three minus five. We have a negative five minus negative 10. Again, we have a negative five minus negative 10. And so what is three minus five? Well, three minus five is negative two. And so we have a negative five minus negative 10, and that gives us five. And that makes sense because if you notice carefully, if we have a negative five, right, minus open bracket, negative 10, right? What do we have? Well, we know that we know that um, a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive, all right? So we have a negative five plus 10, all right? So we have negative five plus 10. And what is negative five plus 10? Well, negative five plus 10, we can write that as 10 minus five, right? We just switch them. And 10 minus five is equal to five. And so that means that if we have negative five minus negative 10, that's equal to five. So PR is equal to negative two and five. And so here they want us to calculate the magnitude of this vector PR. And so in general, if AB, that's the vector AB is equal to XY, then the magnitude of the vector AB, which is, which is denoted as AB with these, with these two lines on the side and the arrow on top, is equal to the following. So here we are given the general definition or the general formula for the magnitude of vector AB. Well, if vector AB has these components x, y, then we know that its magnitude is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, okay? So in this case, right, we evaluate 
we know that PR is equal to negative two and five, which we just figured out in the previous question. And so PR is equal to negative two and five. And we evaluate the magnitude of PR in the following manner. So we have the magnitude of PR is equal to the square root of negative two squared and five squared. And that makes sense because we have to do X squared and Y squared. We take this number, we square it. We take that number, we square it, and then you add them. And so you have negative two squared and that gives you four because negative two times negative two is positive four. And you have five squared and five squared is five times five, which is 25. And so you have that the magnitude of PR is gonna be equal to the square root of four plus 25 and four plus 25 is definitely 29. So the magnitude of PR is equal to the square root of 29 and the square root of 20, 29 is equal to 5.385164807. That's the magnitude of PR as equal to 5.38. The magnitude of PR is equal to 5.385164807. But if, if we want to write this answer correct two decimal places, we know that 5, once it's 5 or greater, we could round up. So we add 1 to 8. And that gives us nine. And so that means that the magnitude of PR is equal to 5.39, correct to two decimal places. And that's the answer to this question. Next, we say, okay, well, if RS is parallel to PQ, find the value of K. Now, in general, um, what do we mean when we say that a vector is parallel to another vector? So if RS is parallel to PQ, this means, right? This means that there exists a real number. Let's call this, this real number N, such that these two happens, such that RS is equal to N times PQ. What does that mean? That means that if these two vectors are parallel, then that means that one vector is a scalar multiple of the other vector, which means that we can take one vector, Rs, and express it in terms of, which means that we could take one vector and then we can take a um, scalar multiple and multiply it by the next vector to get, okay, I said that, I didn't say that, I didn't say that right. So um, let me start again. So Rs is parallel to PQ. This means that there exists a real number, call it N, such that Rs is equal to N times PQ. What does that mean? Well, what that means is, that means that one vector is a scalar multiple of the other. So that means that in this case with RS and PQ, if these two vectors are parallel, it means that we can take RS and we can set it equal to a multiple, a, a number, right? A number N and multiply it by PQ. And when we take this number N, a real number n and multiply it by pq, we should get rs. And that's basically what we're saying. We're saying that if these two vectors are parallel, it means that I can take a real number, multiply it by pq, and that should give me rs. Okay, that's what it means to be um, parallel, which means that I can take this vector, multiply it by a real number, and that, and that should give me this vector back again. And so what is RS? Well, we know that RS is equal to K and 7.5. K and 7.5, that's what RS is, K and 7.5. What is PQ? Well, PQ is three and negative five. Um, that's what we have right here. PQ is um, three and negative five. And we have N right here, right? We don't know what the real number is yet, right? We don't know what the real number is yet, but we have to figure out what that um, but we have to figure out what that real number is. And we also have to figure out what K is as well. All right, so we have N times three and N times three is three N. Then we have N times negative five and N times negative five is negative five N. So we have K and 7.5 is equal to three N and negative five N. Now, two vectors are equal right, if their corresponding entries are equal. And so what do we have? Well, we have that, okay, if we look at the bottom, we have 7.5 is equal to negative 5n. 
So 7.5 is equal to negative 5n. Now we can solve for n. So we can, um, we can divide both sides by 7.5. I'm sorry, we divide both sides by negative 5 because we're trying to figure what n is. And so we divide both sides by negative 5. So this negative 5 cancel with this negative 5. And so we are left with n is equal to 7.5 divided by negative 5. Again, n is equal to 7.5 divided by negative 5. And when we divide these two, we get that n is equal to negative 1.5. So now we know what n is, right? And so we can use n to figure out what k is, because if we look at this um, right here, we, we know that if these two vectors are equal, that means that k must be equal to 3 times n. And so that's why we have this here. k is equal to 3 times n. But what is n? Well, n is negative 1.5. And so we say three multiplied by negative 1.5, and that gives us negative 4.5. And so we know that K is equal to negative 4.5. And so that means that the value of K, if RS and PQ is parallel, is negative 4.5. And that's the answer to this question.